Hi everyone, this is Dr. Orkum Bajic and today we are going to continue with our video series in Descriptive Statistics. In this particular video, our main focus will be the shapes of distributions, five number summary, and how to detect outliers in a given data set. Okay? So when I talk about the shapes of a distrib shapes of data distributions, what I mean by that is when you plot a histogram, what kind of a pattern are we seeing? Okay? So for example, let's say that you have a data set whose histogram is something like the one on the left here. What we call for this kind of distributions is right skewed or positively skewed distribution, okay? So you have um, higher frequencies for smaller uh, data entries. And the one on the right here is called left skewed or negatively skewed distributions. And in this case, you have higher frequencies for larger values in your data set, okay? And the one at the bottom is the symmetric one in which you kind of have this symmetric pattern or bell-shaped distribution. Um, so these three are the uh, three general types of distributions or shapes that you may uh, see when you plot a histogram for a given data set, okay? So for symmetric distributions, we will have mean, mean of the data equals the median of the data, okay? So we talked about this median and mean in our previous video. If you haven't watched it yet, I will put the link into this, this, this video and make sure you watch it before getting into this video. So we talked about mean and median. For symmetric distribution, we have mean equals median. And for positively skewed distributions, we have that mean greater than median in most cases. Okay, there can be exceptions, but in most cases, mean will be greater than median if you have a positively skewed distribution and if you have a negatively skewed distribution mean is usually less than the median okay and then we are going to look at the five number summary five number summary basically includes five different types of uh, values or statistics it includes the smallest value the first quartile the second quartile the third quartile and the largest value okay so we will look at these and then our last focus will be the outliers. We are going to see how we can identify outliers in a given data set. And what I mean by an outlier is we have these values in our data set that are unusual, okay? They're either too large or too small compared to the rest of the data and they are called the outliers, okay? So we are going to focus on how we can identify such values. So here's a data set. I have a sales data of um, let's say about uh, 50 time period, it could be months, weeks, um, whatever it is, but we have a sales data, so we have 103 units, 82 units, and so on. So for this data set, we are going to look at the skewness level. So this skewness level can tell us if we have a symmetric, left skewed, or right skewed distribution, okay? Or in other words, uh, positively or negatively skewed or symmetric uh, distribution. So to identify the skewness, we have a function on Excel that is called skew. And this function requires you to enter your data set. So what I do is I select everything that's in my data set. So I have A2 up to A51. And the result is 0.79. So it's going to be a fractional value like this. And what this means is this is, a, this is a positive value, right? So if I see a positive value, when I use the skew function, that tells me that this data has a positively skewed distribution, okay? So let's look at our uh, graphs. So positively skewed, that means our graph, if we plot the histogram for this data set, it looks something like this. So we have higher frequencies for smaller data entries. So I proactively plotted the histogram, which is here. So let's look at that. So this is a histogram. And what you see is on the left hand side of this histogram, we have higher frequencies, right? So this part, this left hand side of the graph has higher frequencies. And if you go to the right hand side of the graph, you see that the frequencies go down. So this also tells us that our graph is positively skewed. So this graph 
is actually very similar to this graph. So it's right skewed or positively, positively skewed. Okay, so this kind of verifies uh, the result of the skew function. So this was about the shapes of the distribution. And next we are going to look at the five number summary. Again, five number summary includes these five uh, statistics. And the first one is the smallest value, which is straightforward. We are going to use the min function, select everything that's in our data set, A2 up to A51. The result is 62, which means that the minimum value or the smallest value is 62. First quartile, again, I strongly recommend you to watch the previous video, Descriptive Statistics Part 1, because in that video, we looked at how we can identify these values, okay? So the function is quartile on Excel, and quartile function requires you to enter your data range, A2 up to A51, and you need to tell Excel which quartile you are interested in, the first one, second, or the third, okay? So we need to provide that. And in this one, we are looking at the first quartile. Therefore, we are going to type 1. The result is 70, okay? So 70 is the first quartile. Second quartile is also equal to median. You can either use um, the median function or the second quart the quartile function, or you could even do... Uh, the percentile function, and you can just type the 50th percentile or 0.5 in Excel terms, okay? But we are going to use the quartile function, again, A2, A51, comma, 2. So this will give me the second quartile, which is 77.5. And the third quartile is A2 up to A51, comma, 3, which will give me the third quartile. So I have my... Uh, first, second, and third quartiles. And the last one in our five number summary will be the largest value, which is the maximum value in our data set. So I use the max function A2 up to A51. That will be 124. Okay, so I have my five number summary. Um, five number summary is usually... Um, a summary that we use to plot a box plot. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but uh, just keep in mind that five number summary is what we use when we plot a box plot, okay? So that is um, additional information, but we are not going to talk about box plots in this particular video. We are going to jump into how we can identify outliers, okay? So when you identify an outlier, you need um, certain steps to be able to uh, answer your question. The first step is to calculate the inner quartile range, which is what I typed here as IQR, okay? So the inner quartile range is the first thing we need to calculate. And the inner quartile range is equal to the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile, okay? So that difference will give me the inner quartile range, which is equal to 21. And using this inner quartile range, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate two limits. The first one is the lower limit and the second one is the upper limit. Okay. The lower limit is going to be equal to the first quartile minus 1.5 times the inner quartile range. Okay. So the first quartile minus 1.5 times the inner quartile range. That will be 38.5. And the second one is the upper limit, which is equal to the third quartile plus 1.5 times the inner quartile range. Okay, so the third quartile plus 1.5 times the inner quartile range. So let me show you the functions that I used. So lower limit and upper limit calculations are given here. And... I have my lower limit and upper limit, okay? So here's how I use these two values. Any value, any value smaller than lower limit will be an outlier, okay? So if you have a value smaller than your lower limit that you just calculated, that is an outlier. And any value greater than 
the upper limit that you just calculated, that is also an outlier. Okay, so any value is smaller than the lower limit, and any value greater than the upper limit will be an outlier. Okay, so what we will do is to look at our data set and kind of look, kind of identify which ones are smaller than the lower limit and which ones are greater than the upper limit. There are multiple ways to do this. You can use Excel functions if function is a useful tool to calculate, to identify the outliers. Uh, but I think at this point, what I will do is I'm going to copy um, all my data entries. So I'm going to paste them as values, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this data set from smallest to largest, okay? And I'm going to continue with the current selection. And then it's going to be sorted from smallest to, lar smallest to largest. Okay, so let me repeat that one more time. So select everything in your data set, copy, and then right click if you are using a mouse and then select values and then go to this um, option on the right hand side and select sort smallest to largest. We don't want to expand the selection to every other column. What we want is to just sort the values that we selected. So I'm going to say sort. And what it does is to um, sort the data from smallest to largest, okay? So here's how I'm going to detect the outliers in my data set. So I know that the lower limit that I calculated is 38.5 and the upper limit is 122.5. And I have my data sorted from smallest to largest. So the first thing I can do is to go to the part where I can see the smallest values and then check if any of these values are smaller than my lower limit. So the lower limit is 38.5 and the first value in my sorted list is 62. Since this value is greater than my lower limit, I can conclude that there are no outliers in the part that is close to the um, lower limit side of my data set. And the, the second component of this outlier detection will be to look at the bottom of this data set to see if there is any value that is greater than the upper limit. Remember my upper limit is 122.5 and let's see what we have here. So I can see that there's a value 124. Is this greater than my upper limit? Yes, because the upper limit is 122.5. Therefore, this value is an outlier. So next step would be to check the next highest value, which is 115. But since this is smaller, then my upper limit, this is not an outlier, okay? So if this were um, a value larger than my upper limit, then that would be an outlier as well. But in our case, I only have one outlier, which is 124, okay? So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.